Conspiracy Collective. We're going to dive into the story of Jack the Ripper. But what if I told you that Jack might actually be a Jill? So tonight, sit back and relax and enjoy another story time. This is Jillian from the Conspiracy Collective, and tonight I thought we would start a series on Jack the Ripper. So Jack the Ripper, as you well know, is one of the most famous serial killers, probably of all time, and definitely one that has never been caught. So there's a multitude of theories on who he was and what his reasons were for the killings in Whitechapel, but tonight I thought we'd talk about a different theory, and that is one that Jack the Ripper might have been a woman. So the very first female suspect, her name was Mary Wheeler, and she was born in 1866. She was said to have lovely hair and bright blue eyes. However, she was not very attractive, but she still managed to get her fair share of men. And she got involved with a man named James Charles Percy. So she went ahead and took his last name, even though they never did get married. So she was known as Mary Percy. However, she was also known as Miss Non-Content due to her not wanting to get married. In her relationship with James Charles Percy, she became a mistress to many different men. She suffered from depression and alcoholism. However, she met a man named Frank Hugg. And Frank Hogg was married to Phoebe Hogg, and she became his mistress for a while. Um, During her time with him, his wife, Phoebe, got pregnant with their daughter, and Mary Percy was not very happy about that. And one night, she snuck into their house and murdered not only his wife, but suffocated the baby as well. So when she murdered his wife, she used a fire poker. She slashed her throat almost to the point of decapitation and she also stabbed her multiple times. She suffocated the baby and was eventually caught and went to trial and was found guilty and was hung in 1890. So before we get too far, let's talk about the actual crime. On October 24th, Phoebe Hogg was given a handwritten note that invited her to tea. And this note was given to her by her best friend, Mary. So Phoebe decided to pack up their daughter and head over to Mary's for a wonderful evening of conversation and girlfriend time. But by 4 p.m., Mary's neighbor hears the sound of breaking glass, calls over the fence, gets no reply, and then just goes back inside. By 7 p.m., there's a body found. A man is walking around and he finds the body of Phoebe wrapped in a sweater There were no signs of struggle, 
seen around the area. So the police had decided that the body was dropped off there and that the crime had not been committed there. About a mile away later that night, they find a baby carriage that's covered in blood and in the morning, they found the baby. Frank Hogg reports his wife and child missing the next day. He asks his sister to stop by Mary's house to see if she had seen his wife. His sister goes over there. Mary says she hasn't seen her. Then she asks Mary to go with her to ID the body that they had found. They show up at the coroner's and Mary says adamantly that that is not Phoebe. However, his sister identifies the body as Phoebe because of the clothing that she's wearing. Mary starts becoming extremely agitated and says, no, that is not her. The sister then IDs the baby carriage and the police decide that Frank is their number one suspect. So they search his house and they find a key to Mary's house. So he confesses that he's been having an affair. Now, Mary and Phoebe knew about each other. Um, they both had been seeing Frank at the same time. And when Phoebe got pregnant, he decided to ask her to get married. And Mary was still seeing a Frank. But Mary and Phoebe had become best friends in the interim of all of this happening. So later, the neighbor says that she sees or had seen Mary pushing a baby carriage around after dark. So the police decide to search Mary's house and inside of Mary's home, they find clear evidence of a struggle. They find blood on the ceiling, all over the kitchen, as well as blood on her skirt and an apron, along with matted hair and several different knives, along with the fire poker. Her excuse was that she had mice problems and that this mess and all of the blood was due to her killing mice that were in her home. After a lot of prodding and questioning, she ends up chanting, killing mice, killing mice. When she was taken into custody, she had scratches and blood all over her along with two wedding rings, and one of those rings belonged to Phoebe. Now, she left a message for a Madrid paper, and in the paper she wrote a note, a mysterious note, that to this day, no one has really been able to figure out what it meant. But in her note, she wrote, M-E-C-P, last wishes of M-E-W. Have not betrayed M-E-W. Okay, so what does that mean? And how does this tie into Jack the Ripper theory? Well, she lived approximately 21 miles away from Whitechapel, where the murders were committed. And 
They were committed in 1888. Five sex workers, possibly 11. The MO for the Ripper murders were deep throat slashes, um, abdominal mutilation, genital mutilation, removal of internal organs, as well as facial mutation. Now, two years later, Mary Wheeler goes on to kill and mutilate her victim. And they did say that Mary Percy, Mary Wheeler, was remarkably strong for a woman. Um, in that time, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who was very famous for writing the Sherlock Holmes books, had a theory that it was a female. He thought it could be a midwife because who could move easily through the night without any question other than a midwife who could be covered in blood explainably, especially while everyone was looking for a man. But could have been a woman. And that woman could get by with any explanation without looking suspect. So another interesting thing about Mary Percy is that it is said that she was an abortionist. It's well known that in around that time, if you had an unwanted pregnancy, she was who you called to take care of it. Mary Kelly, one of the Ripper's victims, was said to be pretty far along in pregnancy. And who else would she call? who was in the neighborhood in that area, other than Mary Percy. So with Doyle's theory, if Mary Percy was Jack the Ripper, she did have access to, possibly, allegedly, and would not look suspect if she did commit those crimes. She was well-versed in um, the human anatomy and the other interesting thing is that Mary Kelly was known, well-known to wear a specific shawl um, every day. And not having much money back then, if you had a certain piece of clothing that sort of stood out as your, um, your identity as to what you wore a lot and all the time. So this shawl was specific to Mary Kelly. When Mary Kelly's body was found, they had found everything folded up neatly next to the body, but the shawl was missing. And someone had identified a woman leaving that area with Mary Kelly's shawl on. So there's that. From 1888 until 2012, London police have investigated 30 cases where the murder victims were butchered in the same manner as Jack the Ripper. 
29 of those cases have been solved and they've all been committed by women. So in 2006, some DNA came back from one of the Ripper's letters and the DNA came back as female. So, does that mean that Jack the Ripper could have been a Jill the Ripper? Maybe. Now, as far as the letter is concerned, um, some theories are that it could have been multiple people that were acting together as Jack the Ripper and that she was sending a message in her final note before she was hung, letting them know that she did not betray them. I don't know. It's an interesting theory, but I think it's one that we should consider and something that if you're interested in, you can look into a little bit further. The next one that we will look into is a man, and his name was James Maybrick, who was murdered by his wife, Florence Maybrick. But we'll talk about them on another episode of The Conspiracy Collective. So thanks for joining us, and let me know what your thoughts are on Jill the Ripper. <laughs>